Well hello everyone and welcome to the June tour. So we finally had some rain as we, um, we've been watching people to the north of us and people to the south of us getting rain and uh, we've been missing out until about four or five days ago we actually find, finally had some first down, proper downpour for about three months. So things have been suffering but uh, uh, a lot of watering been going on. So, as usual, kicking off for the rhubarb bed, it's kind of bounced back thanks to that rain and uh, the uh, sunflowers, teddy bear variety, have put on plenty of growth. The nigella um, behind the marigolds there is uh, struggling a little bit, but that's our fault for transplanting in uh, seedlings rather than just uh, putting the seeds on direct. So, we've been p putting in uh, various things in gaps that we've uh, been finding. They've got a, a last minute tomato, gardener's delight in there. Um, some onions and beetroot along the front there. The onions, some of them are a bit um, twisted with the uh, eelworm and uh, actually the onions and alliums in general have been a bit of a disaster this year. So the strawberries, Cambridge favourite, are coming towards the end. Um, flamenco ones, the ever bearers down the front, are uh, a little bit on the small side, but it's cropping. And we've got some leeks in there. And our climbing beans. So we've got Benchmaster, uh, Firestorm. Golden Gate and Enorma, so four varieties. And the ones on the right are doing a lot better than the ones on the left. And in fact, a lot of the ones on the left, which were originally sown also in direct uh, seeds in the ground, um, we've had to transplant in quite a lot because of failures. And we've got a volunteer tomato. We think it's one of the tumblers we had last year in one of the baths. And the gooseberries and black currants. They're going well. They're getting close to uh, their first ever harvest. So we had cover crops around them that we've cut back. And here we have the uh, sweet candle carrots doing rather well with their Enviromesh. Although I have to say that I just looking in through the environment and there's loads of f uh, flies and stuff in there so <laughs> um, hmm so the carrot fly is supposed to look like a small house fly I can see what looks like lots of small house flies in there so that doesn't bode well and the uh, blueberries are doing fine I think some of them have this this one's failed somewhat but we've got something coming on that one uh, potatoes are getting there. So this is the second courgette that's gone in this hole here. The first one failed. Not sure why. And this one's struggling a little bit. Kohlrabi there. French beans in here. So we've got the purple uh, variety velour in uh, this bit here which is not doing terribly well. If I can see a lot of uh, ants milling around there. And the yellow variety safari down here, which seems to be doing a lot better. In previous years, we found that the yellow varieties seem to do better on this site. So this is Florador. This is one of the um, round um, yellow courgettes. Uh, we have no idea how big they're supposed to get before we harvest them, but um, we'll see. See how it goes. If anybody knows, then please let me know. The beans up the back here are um, last year's beans that survived the winter. So um, we're hoping that uh, their hardiness will mean that um, they do quite well. So we got our cabbages in here. 
and our salsify and carrots in here with some lettuce marigolds and tomatoes more leeks over there uh, one of my th th uh, pictures for the thumbnail will be the uh, chicory flowers this is the, the flower in their second year this is just a our a fallow bed cover crop and they've got a lovely little flower some nice little dark bits in the stamens which are very nice so we've got uh, cover crop with odds and sods in here then we've got some beans and spring onions not showing any signs yet and we've got a couple of um, Brussels sprouts in now the peach has been absolutely massacred since the last uh, video I've done the uh, um, the summer prune it's a second year and um, I really discovered that after the, the, the fact that I probably should have um, pruned it in March although as a stone fruit um, you know the textbooks tend to say some mature varieties it's going to be in the summer so it got an early summer chop back just to give it shape got a new bed here just got cosmos in it for now but uh, we will be putting in a intersectional peony for next year got one at uh, the back garden that we can divide up so the second year we've had tomatoes in the front of the shed and this this year I think the soil is now better for them so they seem to be enjoying it with the marigolds Got some pinks in a pot and the flower area see so we've got a lot of black fly on the globe artichoke and in various places around the plot so peppers in the quad grow they seem to be loving it so we're going to shade the uh, the pots and even the plants because the the plants are susceptible to scorching um, and we've got a heat wave coming in uh, on Thursday Wednesday or Thursday is supposed to be 30 31 degrees so we'll be protecting that And Waldo, our thornless black blackberry, is small but uh, perfectly formed. Berries happening there. And the pond. And the garish, I mean glorious lilies are out. We were going to get rid of the um, the rhubarb and custard variety. We've got one orange one there, but. Uh, we ran out of time and uh, we thought well let's give them another year and of course they're absolutely fantastic this year sadly the daylily's not out more cosmos a couple of big dahlias up there echinacea salvia globe artichoke not now as happy as it was because of the heat so i'm not sure that the uh, flowers will actually come to anything but things tend to tend to get baked on the bank there so, pluot, that's been pruned as well. Our ribbon beds. Um, the uh, onions here haven't been too good as we've harvested the uh, garlic and we got um, quite a lot of white rot. And uh, we got 66 bulbs out of 90. Sweet corn. and parsnips so after the third sowing of parsnips with the variety uh, gladiator which has been reliable for us the last couple of years we managed to get all the stations were active and then uh, we lost four of the 18 and we think the way they disappeared so cleanly i think they probably got pecked through the netting so the plums are going okay apart from the uh, aphid damage uh, the strawberries is a more Cambridge favorite they we've uncovered them today because they're pretty much at the end of this flourish for the year 
strawberries, polka variety at the back there. So it's, uh, it's the first year. It's got some fr fruit on it, but it's really for next year. We have noticed that this supposed plum looks remarkably like a cherry. So I've taken a photo of it. I'm going to send it back to the supplier and say, is this variety meant to look like a cherry? It is a cross, but it's a cross of, between two different types of plum, so it really shouldn't look like a cherry. But... So, as you can see, there's lots of gaps down the end here that, that um, in the uh, onion bed. That's the uh, Red Baron. As uh, the uh, reds have really not been happy at all. Centurion um, is doing a little bit better, but I'm not too sure we're going to have a success as last year. So we've got some Facelia cover crop here and we've deliberately left it high so that it's shading the lettuce. And I think that's a policy we're going to have as a sort of constant through the years because it works well to, uh, to shade lettuce. Now uh, we've got tomatoes, more peppers. And our Calabrese, not terribly happy. And we've got some red cabbage. So the fruit trees have all been um, pruned, apart from the pear, wrong time of year. But the plum, the gauge and the damson have uh, been chopped down. They're only supposed to be eight feet varieties, so uh, um, certainly the Victoria plum on its dwarf rooting stock was was heading beyond that, so it, it had to come down. So we got uh, butternut squash here. And more courgettes. And dahlias all the way around. Another courgette. And a butternut. honking noise is when somebody leaving sees somebody at the gate and they're just letting them know they're coming and they can leave the gate open. So another random collection of things, some French beans and uh, that's a sun gold tomato, courgettes and some of our, that's the um, Glencoe raspberry and a couple of blackcurrant uh, cuttings I shoved in that have done very well. And the sweet peas are coming up the obelisk. Surrounded by marigolds. There's another um, butternut squash hidden in there. That's supposed to be going up the obelisk if the sweet peas will allow it. That seems to be in a longer video than I normally do. I'm over 13 minutes. Goodness me. Okay, there we are. Hope everybody's keeping well and I'll catch you next month. Bye for now.